Good morning, brothers and sisters. We welcome you to our online service. Let us start by the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on other cities in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For us the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us to come so that we can be able to deliver the message to the people who are at home. We commit this online service unto you in everything that we do as your servants. For it is in Jesus' holy name we pray and believe. Today is the third Sunday of Easter, the collect of today. Almighty Father, holy and reverend, grant that our lives shall manifest faith, holiness, reverence, for God and humility to put the needs of others before your own, and thus lay for themselves treasure in heaven, indestructible of eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayers. We are going to pray for the church. Almighty God, we thank you because of our church universal that each and every Sunday or every day where people gather for worship, they do not gather because of what is happening. We commit your church as it is going through these hard times. But Lord, you are going to work with your people, even at home. We pray the Lord you will continue to encourage them. And especially our church in the Anglican Church of Kenya. We remember the Archbishop. We remember our other bishops. We remember our Bishop of Nairobi, Bishop Joel. We also remember each and every clergy. We remember even our archdeacon in this church as the vicar of the parish and all those who suffer under, uh, who suffer under him. The Lord, you are going to walk with them. The Lord, your church, even after the end of it all, there shall be revival in your house. In Jesus' holy name, we pray and believe. We also pray for the nation. Lord, we thank you because of the nation of Kenya. We thank you because of Uhulu Mwigai Kenyatta. We thank you for the deputy and all the readers in 47 counties, all the way down to the local villages. The Lord, as they lead this uh, great nation, and especially at this time when you have this pandemic, the Lord, you give them wisdom. And especially, even the one who is leading the docket, Mutahi Kagwe, of the health ministry, that you guide them as they, uh, they, 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 they do whatever they do, so that each and every day, the Lord, you are going to be with them as they assist in combating these coronavirus. We pray the Lord God Almighty will overcome at the end of it all. For it is in Jesus' holy name we pray and believe. Let us pray for our families. Lord God Almighty, at this time, Lord God Almighty, many families are experiencing hardship. We pray the Lord God Almighty, you are going to walk with them. There are those who live heart to mouth. May you walk with them, O God, that they may have even those who come for their assistance. Even the government to come for the assistance of those who do not have, and even those whom God you have blessed, they can be able to sacrifice themselves and to work with them at these difficult times. When we lose the loved ones, and sometimes we are not able even to go and bury them, Lord, console us. And for the families who are, have the bereavement, may you work with them, O God. And for every situation in every family, God, we pray, that you continue to protect them from this deadly issue. We also pray for what is happening in this country, that the France, there are those who are left homeless. Oh, God Almighty, 
We pray the Lord God Almighty that they are going to, to overcome even as we always say that it is a blessing when it rains. But there are some times that when it rains, there are some which is not a blessing. But Lord God Almighty, we pray the Lord they will overcome in the name of Jesus. We also pray for the issue of locust. There are those even today, they are experiencing the same. God Almighty, we pray the Lord they, also, they will also overcome because you are there. We pray all these in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we are going to have the leading of the day from the Old Testament leading, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, beginning to lead from verse 1. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones. And say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon, upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come and live. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied and I was as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a lettering sound. Then the bones came together, bone to bone. I locked the tendons, and the flesh appeared uh, on them and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the blessed. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come blessed. From the four weeds and breath unto this slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the blessed entered them. They came to life, and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Lord says, My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I'll bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I'm the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I'll put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I'll settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. At this time, I would like to invite the vicar, our archdeacon, to come and deliver the message of the Lord. Paribu. Good morning, viewers. 
from wherever you are following us from, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, we want to warmly welcome you as we share the word of God, theme, hope of restoration, that's going to be guided by the reading that you just read from Ezekiel 37. The book of Ezekiel was written by prophet Ezekiel, who was among the Jews who were exiled in Babylon. And during this time, the southern kingdom of Judah had fallen in the hearts of the Babylonians. The northern kingdom, that is Israel, had already ceased to exist after being defeated by the Assyrian Empire about 130 years earlier. The name Ezekiel signifies the strength of God, all strengthened of God. This means whom God calls to any service, he will himself a number for it. When God commissions, he will give the power to execute it. We see in the Bible many servants of God who felt the task is enormous and they are not humanly possible going to execute, but God gave them strength to do it. The rest is wrong. From Moses, who felt he's not equal to the task, must tamala, can't move, God gave him strength. Isaiah the prophet, I am man of unclean lips. God gave him power to move ahead with the mission. Not forgetting the disciples of Jesus Christ, who were ordinary men of God, who God used to do extraordinary things. And so even to the case of Ezekiel, God calls him and commissioned him for the ministry of which he was to undertake. The outline of the chapters from chapter 1 to 24, Ezekiel gives all a cause of judgment against Israel. Then chapter 25 to 32, he gives all a cause of judgment against the nations. And finally, that the three to the end, he gives all a cause of consolation for Israel, message of restoration. After reproofs and threatenings, Ezekiel takes time to encourage people with a message of restoration. He gives them the message of spiritual revival and a glorious future for the redeemed of God. In Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 14, the portion which we've read, Ezekiel is taken in a vision to a valley of dry bones. The bones were many scattered all over the place. This separates the situation of the nation of Israel in the hearts of Babylonians. The situation was helpless and hopeless. And he asked, son of man, can these bones live? I don't know how would you answer such a question. Humanly speaking, no one hopes that scattered dry bones might live. But Ezekiel's response is quite amazing. He says, O oh, sovereign Lord, you know. Ezekiel acknowledges that God remains sovereign even in situations which seem difficult and impossible in the eyes of man. He responded to God's question with the only hope that could be found, the hope in God. Ezekiel was confident that God did know. 
He left the matter with God's power and wisdom. We can say he totally surrendered unto God. Brothers and sisters, what will make the dry bones to live? I see two aspects in this prophecy. One, the praise of the word. He says, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. God's word has supernatural power. And that's why we must continuously allow the word of God to give us direction in every situation of life, however difficult it may be. Psalm 119 verse 105 states, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The other aspect of this prophecy, I see the prophecy to call upon the breath. Ezekiel was told to call upon the breath or the spirit to bring life to this strain. And the result was amazing. After Ezekiel's faithful proclamation of God's message, the work of reviving the dry bones was completed. The breath of God came to the reanimated bodies and they stood on their feet. In verse 10 we are told, they stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Dry bones stood up on their feet, not only living men, but effective men, fit for the service and a formidable force. In verse 11 to 14, God explains the vision to Ezekiel that it symbolizes the experience of Jews in captivity who are saying, our hope is lost. That shows the depth of despair to which they are now reduced. And he promises that I will open your graves and cause you to come up. Life is brought to which was dead, God who is sovereign. And there is also the promise that you, I will bring you into the land of Israel. The revival of the nation of Israel included restoration to the land. And the climax was you shall know that I am the Lord. God would powerfully reveal himself to Israel through revival and restoration to the Lord. What can we learn from this passage today? God is God of restoration. He's telling Ezekiel, it doesn't matter that Judah is lying in devastation, Nation dispersed, temple destroyed, God will definitely turn allowed the situations. Another thing we also learn is God is God of resurrection power. He breathed new life into the life rest. He breathed new life in the valley of dry bones. He can do it today. And now, in the writing of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, he says, We are hard pressed in every side, but we are not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry aloud in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus Christ may be revealed in our body. That even when we see like we have reached the end of ourselves, we still serve God of hope and Christ in us, we are more than conquerors. Paul also puts this in Romans 8 verse 18 and he says, I consider our present suffering are not worthy comparing with the glory that will be revealed 
in us. He talks about the present suffering and the future glory. Brothers and sisters, it is hard to imagine life beyond present circumstances, and especially today in the light of the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. The church or religious activities going through hard times, economies of the world threatened, business and companies registering downward trade, education in total dilemma, uncertainty in education programs and schedules. Not forget the health of the society because sick society cannot be productive. A valley of dry bones. The situation may look helpless and hopeless, but my encouragement to us this morning that we serve God of restoration. By God's power, we shall experience a moment of revival and restoration. Businesses will thrive again. Churches will be once again experience a revival as never before. Families which are scattered and even separated this time that you cannot even visit a country or from wherever you are, especially those who in the city of Nairobi. A time is coming when families will also sing a triumph song when this enemy is defeated. There will be shout of joy, a noise of gatherings in family reunions, churches celebrating, and country rejoicing. And as a country, we will declare that the heart of God has done it. He did it in the time of Ezekiel. He will do it today. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So brothers and sisters, let's, let us cheer up. Let us keep up the faith. Let us soldier on for Christ in Christ we shall overcome in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray the final prayers. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you very much for watching our content and kindly subscribe to the button uh, below. Don't honor that cabell, please click it. Thank you very much.